Hey, Grace Bible Church. I'm so excited that you're about to gather as a church body tomorrow after all these weeks apart. We've truly been blessed and grown through this time, but there's no replacement for being together. The church is meant to gather, to assemble, to be the assembly whenever possible. And I'm glad that you're gonna get to start to be that tomorrow. And as we gather in various contexts, Sunday service, small groups, ministries, and maybe or even especially the impromptu face-to-face -face one another ministries of the body, be on the lookout for who isn't there. For many, their absence likely doesn't reflect a lack of desire to be with the church. But when, when Paul was torn away from the church in Thessalonica, he wrote to them in 1 Thessalonians 1.17 that this caused him to be more eagerly desirous to see them face to face. So as you joyfully gather, be particularly aware of who isn't there. Be loving, thoughtful, creative, and don't forget that though absent in many ways for now, they are a part of our local church. Even being back together, it isn't the same. Social distancing, limited services, face masks, and more, they're, they're hard, it isn't the same. Getting a bear hug from Eric, enjoying an un un unobstructed view of Omri's huge, genuine smile, our children learning God's word alongside other children in Next Generation Ministries, and the countless other small joys that many didn't even know to thank God for before this. It isn't the same without him, but it's still better than live stream. And these difficulties actually allow many to come who otherwise would need to keep live streaming, would need to stay away. All of these interventions are designed not primarily to protect the one doing them, but to protect others from you. And that's what's so hard with COVID-19. You see, it tends to spread from asymptomatic individuals. In our Sunday gathering, it's probably the most dangerous, most contagious time of the week for many. You know, outside of the pandemic, more normal times, we experience this reality every winter when on Sunday, your kids come into contact with new germs and by Tuesday, they're snotty, snotty nosed and sick, right? But when those germs might do serious harm to some, we do well to think soberly about if we about what we can do to mitigate that risk for them. When we come together on Sundays, it's it's a time when we are we're generally apart throughout the week, right? And we come together and now we're we're experiencing contact with people that we didn't experience contact with in normal settings. And now we are in a way that frankly is awesome because we are close to one another. Um, but if there's a time when, when germs will spread, it's this time. And so when, when those germs might do serious harm and when our government's asking us to mitigate that spread, we, we do wise to think about it. So when we come to church, have others in mind. This shouldn't be hard. I, I've witnessed over the last two decades that this thinking of others, it's actually a mark of Grace Bible Church. You come to church with others on your mind normally. And if there was ever a place where I have experienced people mimicking Jesus's Philippians 2, 3 through 4 example, it is this church. Paul wrote, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Rightly understood, masks, social distancing, hand washing, not coming to church when you're sick, that's in line with this thinking of others. Just as you normally cover your mouth when you cough or sneeze, or you wash your hands, you, you don't do those things primarily to protect yourselves, right? You do them to protect others. That's normal. This, what we're going to be doing in these next few weeks is just in line with that. So... When I was in the hospital with lymphoma, or maybe when, when David's been in the hospital with his cancer um, over the last few years, many of you have demonstrated this self-emptying love, not, not huge things, but inconvenient things, by 
washing your hands, donning a ridiculous looking yellow gown and wearing a mask. Those things weren't to protect you, right? They were to protect me from you. They were to protect other people from yourself. Thankfully, we're in a time where that level of protection, right, gowning up isn't necessary in the general population. Sometimes it's unclear what is actually necessary. But when you came to visit me, what was clear was that you were willing to be uncomfortable to be with me. And this is similar to how you can care for the at risk in our church body. The uncomfortable things that you do may make it possible for somebody to come who would otherwise stay home. Right? I've, I've been so encouraged as I've interacted with many in our body over these restrictions that plan on doing things that you otherwise wouldn't do out of care for others. It isn't obvious right now what the right amount of caution is. And this is certainly a moving target, a hotly debated target. But what's more important than what we do is why we do it and how we do it. And I'm not bringing this as a corrective to Grace Bible Church, but an encouragement. This is what I've seen as you've interacted over this. But it's an area where I think we are particularly vulnerable in the fragmented political nature that, of, of the world that we live in. Right? What's more important than what we do, it's how and why we do it. So the why, I refer us back to Philippians 2, 3 through 4. Christ-like, self-emptying love, counting others more significant than yourself. Right, We're going to do some things in the upcoming weeks because our governor asked us to, and it's right to submit. But even better, while we submit to the government, how much better is it? If we have first and most on our mind, I'm doing this because I love you, church. And how? Without grumbling or disputing. As children of God, without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in this world. That's where Paul goes immediately after talking about Christ's self-emptying love in Philippians 2, 3 through 4. Just a few verses later, he implores the Philippian readers to do all things without arguing, without grumbling or complaining, because they are God's children and meant to shine as lights in this world. Some might come to church and do something that you're uncomfortable with, that you disagree with, that you even feel is unloving towards you. You know what? This is an exam This is a time for you to love back. For some, mask use may present legitimate challenges. Sometimes people just forget. This is new for everybody. Sometimes people might not have the same knowledge as you have. They might have different knowledge than you have. All right? Some people, masks are not a big deal. I wear it all day long. For others, it's just an all-encompassing, super encumbering, um, totally distracting thing. And, and they, may, they might choose to do something that you are uncomfortable with. This is okay. It's an opportunity to, in love, think of 1 Corinthians 13. It's an opportunity in love to be patient and kind, not rude or insisting on your own way to avoid irritability, to avoid resentfulness, to bear all things, hope all things, endure all things. You know, we don't need to show complete unity in what we do, but we need to show unity in how we do it. With Christ-like love, we live in the world, but we don't live like the world, right? We live as lights in the world. And these topics of social distancing, policy decisions, they've led to incredible division, even hatred in the world. And I'm not going to act for a second like our church, like your elders are going to be strike the right balance on this. Like we know better than, than the world what to do. But you know, we have a unique opportunity in how we do it to shine like lights in the world. 
Right now, I'm in Seattle. I'm talking to you from Seattle. I'm gonna be live streaming for the next many months along with my family. Our son David will be, Lord willing, getting a bone marrow transplant in the upcoming weeks. And over the last seven and a half years of cancer in our home, live stream has been an incredible blessing. A lifeline back to the Sunday gathering of the church. In these last few weeks, last months, we've been blessed by Zoom meetings. I'm so glad that for many of you, your time for live streaming and Zoom meetings are coming to an end. But for many, it won't. Many the live stream, the Zoom meetings will continue to be their lifeline back to the church, not just for those who are out of state for treatment, right, or, or who are suffering from cancer, but some who are just home because they, they view themselves as, as high risk or they, they are high risk, right? You've, you've cared for us, for the Hantla family so well. But the Hantla family is a more dramatic and noticeable one. The one who has been at the church for a short time, who might be a less conspicuous member of the body, is no less important. I, I can't put this any better than the Apostle Paul. And the implications for the following verses are many in this pandemic. I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 12, 22 through 26. And as I do... Think about the, the members who might not be as obvious, the, the weaker members who, if you don't give it thought, you might not notice. In your joy of being back together, you might not notice are absent. This is an incredible opportunity as you gather in joy together to truly be thinking of the weaker member, maybe the, the less dignified member or, or the less obvious absent member people who you genuinely love, but you get to, but I, I encourage you to think about and be creative in how to care for them and keep them involved, even in their absence as we rejoin together. First Corinthians 12, 22 through 26. The parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow greater honor. And our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. So for those who aren't going to be at the next services, at the upcoming services, rejoice for those who are. Live stream from home, zoom to your small group without grumbling or complaining. And for those who do get to experience the joy of being together, it'll be different for a while. Hopefully this is just for a short time. This is not a new normal. Um, but for those of you who are back together, enjoy it. But with a mind that there are some who still aren't. Thank you for taking the time to watch this, read it. Um, continue to pray for me, for our family as we are out of town, as we're going to be in Seattle. I'll try to keep you up to date on what's going on with our family. Um, but just remember that we're not the only family. We're not the only ones who are going to be gone from the church. I'm so grateful for all of you. I love being your pastor. I love being your friend. May God bless our church as we gather back together.